You're watching NTC News, DeKalb County's only television news source on the campus of Northern Illinois University and from the Northern Television Center. This is NTC News Tonight. Looks like lines are being drawn here in DeKalb County between ComEd and people who live near Genoa. Good evening, I'm Jacob Whitelaw. Thanks for joining us. And I'm Sabrina Bennett. We're talking about high power electric lines. ComEd wants to build a new set of transmission towers across the county, but that has a lot of, a lot of residents, well, charged up. Construction may begin soon on a different type of power line as a part of the Grand Prairie Gateway Project. ComEd is planning on putting up new high voltage transmission lines that will run from Byron to Wayne across four counties. The project is designed to help alleviate congestion throughout these regions and keep costs down for consumers as well. What it does for our own customers is give us an additional east-west route to move large bulk power to serve customers. It provides us a better alternative uh, when we need to do maintenance, gives us more flexibility for maintenance. And uh, the ultimate goal is to continue to keep the cost of power lower. The area specific to DeKalb County runs just south of Baseline Road. The route runs mostly through farmland, but one residential area in South Genoa has some concerns. You can't replace neighborhoods with farm condition. You know, we're, we're talking neighborhoods close to homes and families and children. And, um, you know, we have a really nice neighborhood. I would hate to see high voltage lines going through our neighborhood. The power lines stand at more than 125 feet tall and are equipped to handle approximately 207,000 more volts than the current power lines. Disrupting the view isn't all that residents are worried about. Health and safety is another major concern. That's one of the reasons why we were doing uh, a lot of this public input is to be aware of potential issues related to health and safety. We've tried to take that into account in our own analysis as well. It's very important for us because, uh, you know, we want people to feel that, uh, that this is a safe and reliable way of delivering power. ComEd will allow residents to voice their concerns at multiple town hall meetings. In DeKalb, Sabrina Bennett, NTC News. The ComEd project is set to be done by mid-2017. The sentencing has been delayed for a DeKalb man charged with sexually touching a child under 13. 40-year-old Jose Torres is facing four years of probation, but right now he has other problems because he is also being held in a federal immigration case. Evergreen Village Mobile Home Park should be moved by this time next year. That's the word from the county officials who met with people from Evergreen Village last night. Their homes are in floodplains near Kishwaukee River. They've been flooded repeatedly over the years. State and federal emergency management agencies granted the county over five and a half million dollars to relocate homeowners. We may be seeing some new food and shopping options just around the corner. The old Smalls Furniture Building across from Super Walmart is under construction. The owner says the center's main unit will host a high-end seafood restaurant. Six or seven potential businesses are showing interest in moving there as well. The cost of this development is about two million dollars. Owner and developer John Pappas hopes construction will be completed in another month. Ghosts, clowns, zombies, and an Egyptian goddess are coming to haunt downtown DeKalb. The Egyptian theater is being transformed into a house of horrors known as the Amenti Haunted House. Here's Cassie Allman with a terrifying story. Terror after terror awaits those who dare to enter Amenti's world of the dead. Amenti, the Egyptian goddess, wouldn't be able to help scare her subjects without tireless months of preparations by Preservation of the Egyptian Incorporated, a nonprofit organization also known as PET. The organization faces unique challenges in setting up the haunted house. Most haunted houses take four to six months 
um, to actually build and construct everything, and we do it in 13 days. Volunteers are essential to the days of setup and acting that the haunted house requires. The attraction hosts 20 different haunted scenes spread out across six different levels, all set up and filled with terror by volunteers. There's uh, actor training, talking about uh, different scare techniques and things to look for, things to do, things to try. Um, and then really the rest of it is just experience. Even the volunteers helping construct the basic haunted house layout can see that it will be scary when it is finished in just 13 days. I, I did see some, uh, like, there's that doll over there. Pretty scary. That just, just plain dead right now. It looks like a real person too, which is, which is the scary part. The profits made by scaring individuals over the coming weeks will help further restore and maintain the historic Egyptian theater. This year marks the ninth haunted house hosted at the theater. And according to PET, it is going to be the best one yet. For NTC News, I'm Cassie Allman, Downtown DeKalb. The first day of the haunted house starts tomorrow. For more information, you can visit the Egyptian Theater's website. Well, on another note, today's weather has been pretty chilly and cloudy outside. It has been. Please tell us, Brittany, this weather's not going to stick around. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but unfortunately it is. So we're going to have to get used to this fall weather. Taking a look at today's temperatures, or tomorrow's temperatures in the area, we have scattered showers all over for the whole day, the on and off, we're going to see temperatures in the upper 50s to lower 60s. But for more on this weather update, stay with us. You're watching NTC News Tonight. Welcome back. I know today was crummy outside. We saw clouds, rain on and off, horrible temperatures. We saw 54 degrees today as our high, and tonight we're going to see a low of 41 degrees. But take a look at this. We're actually lucky. Right here we have a big like air, cold air front that pushed into the west of us, and these are temperatures in the 30s to actually 20s. Look, we were right here in the mid-50s. We got lucky, and we didn't get to see any of those temperatures, but it is really happening out there, unfortunately. Today, that front that was in our area bringing us all that rain pushed off to the east. And as it does, we saw less and less showers, but we are seeing some spin-ups in our area. As you can tell, the rain is lightly going to be spread around here tonight and tomorrow. It's going to be scattered showers on and off. One area for concern we are looking at Friday. As this cold front moves closer to our area by Friday night, it's going to bring along colder temperatures. Yes, colder temperatures. And again, more rain. Tonight, showers low 41 degrees, decent winds. Tomorrow, showers in the morning as they start to taper off. The sun will start to come out. We have partly sunny skies with a high of 58 degrees. Tomorrow night, we're going to see partly cloudy skies again. Low 41 as those winds start to calm down. 
Now to my five day forecast Thursday rain as that rain pushes out of your area the sun will start to come out. We're going to see temperatures in the upper 50s Friday. It's going to be a little bit windy. We're going to see gusts up to 15 miles per hour. Saturday as that front pushes into our area we have a chance for showers Friday night and Saturday. As you can see those temperatures drop down into the mid to lower 50s for the rest of the week. Sunday is going to be beautiful. We're going to see sunny skies. Definitely get out and enjoy that haunted house we were just talking about. I would definitely go on Sunday. Monday, showers again. So we are going to have to get used to this rain and colder weather. Unfortunately, it is fall. That's it for weather. Let's send it back to the desk. Thanks, Brittany. This time of year, apple orchards and pumpkin patches can be overwhelmed by the huge crowds. Well, inside the 815 reporter, Lindsay Deal has a story on the quiet you pick Berry's Farm in Kingston, where the only noise you can hear is the nature around you. Too many people venture out at the same time to pick raspberries at the You Pick Berries Farm in Kingston, says Christine Ewald. But for her, that's not what the picking experience should be about. But, you know, it's also a place where you can be in solitude and, you know, soak up that peace and uh, go away with more than just your raspberries. Christine started this farm in her backyard eight years ago after her husband passed away. And she found that being in the fields gave her therapeutic relief. When I was working the land, I started to experience uh, peace. Um, and I really think that that's a God-given thing that comes to us through nature. Now, the only sound you can hear is the wind in the trees blowing through the neighboring farm fields. But Christine says she doesn't just want to give her visitors a relaxed experience, but a unique one too. She allows them to pay in pints using this payment box on an honor system when she's not around. Sort of a uh, testimony to my belief that there's mainly good in everybody. And she hasn't regretted it since. This is Lisa and her daughter Rachel's first time out to the berry farm. They decided to come here out on a whim after seeing the sign on the side of the road. I was pleasantly surprised how beautiful it is here and all the, the lovely raspberries they have this time of year. And with a noisy home back in Cortland, they say a little peace and quiet on Rachel's day off is just what they need. We have a house full of boys, so this is girl time for us. <laughs> so we like the quietness, right? Yes. <laughs> Now running a raspberry farm all on your own may seem like a lot of work, but the owner Christine says it's visits like these that put a smile on her face and make it all worth it. When I hear laughter back on the land, um, especially after my loss, uh, it just brings joy to my heart. There it is. And she hopes the farm stays just the same in years to come. Lindsay Deal in Kingston, NTC News Tonight. If blueberries and blackberries are more your taste, you'll have to wait until next year's crop. But the owner, Christine Ewald, hopes to stay open until the first hard frost. A carpenter's real man is going to jail for a long time. And Bill Daly is returning most of his campaign money. These are today's state lines. A Carpentersville man has been sentenced to 66 years in prison for beating a woman in the face with a hammer, raping a child, and stabbing a dog. Prosecutors say 29-year-old Daniel Half was visiting the woman at her boyfriend's home when he attacked her and sexually assaulted the boyfriend's 8-year-old daughter. Democrat Bill Daley says he's giving back most of the money people donated to his campaign for governor before he ended it. Daley raised more than a million dollars in a primary challenge to Governor Pat Quinn. Because of a campaign finance law, Daley says donors will get back only about 80% of what they gave. A study says that six Illinois nuclear power plants logged hundreds of safety violations since the year 2000. The Government Accounting Office says Illinois plants had more than 1,100 violations. An Exelon spokesman says they haven't seen the report. Amtrak lines to and from Chicago saw a jump in ridership during the fiscal year that just ended. 
The biggest increase, nearly 10%, was on the Chicago to St. Louis route. Amtrak trains between Chicago, Milwaukee, and Detroit have had more riders. And those are today's State Lines. The government shutdown may be close to an end. A powerful earthquake kills hundreds in the Philippines. Here's what's happening in today's World Watch. There may finally be some light at the end of the tunnel in Washington, at least for now. Senate leaders appear to be closing in on a last-minute agreement to avert default and reopen the government after a 16-day shutdown. The New York Stock Exchange soared on the news. Officials said the proposal calls for the Treasury to have borrowing authority through February 7th, and the government would reopen through the middle of January. In the Philippines, at least 144 people were killed in Tuesday's powerful earthquake. More than 291 people are injured. The 7.1 magnitude tremor triggered landslides and damaged buildings. Rescue crews have been digging through the rubble looking for victims. A deadly typhoon is quickly racing away from Japan, but it hit with damaging winds and startling rain totals. At least 17 people are reported dead. Heavy rains triggered flooding and landslides that blocked roads and crushed houses. Some 50,000 customers are without power. In California, a man is being held on a $1 million bail for setting off a dry ice explosion at Los Angeles International Airport. Police arrested 28-year-old DiCarlo Bennett. He's charged with placing a destructive device near an aircraft Sunday. A second explosion at LAX on Monday is still under investigation. Nobody was injured. And that's today's World Watch. Smokers should pay more attention to littering because the fines are going up beginning next year. So we asked people around the NIU campus for their thoughts on flicking cigarette butts and the littering law. Here's what you told us. What happens when you're walking down the street and smoking a cigarette? But I don't think that smokers should be penalized more. It's impossible to enforce. That it's really great that they're finally enforcing a law against throwing cigarette butts out the window. I don't think jail is necessarily appropriate. People litter all the time and they don't get in trouble, so why should people get in trouble if they throw cigarettes? It's the same thing. be a lot of angry smoking students out there. Now last time NIU went to Mount Pleasant to play Central Michigan, the Chippewas won in a shootout 48 to 41. Now that was the last time the Huskies lost a conference game. NIU currently has the longest conference winning streak in the country, 19 straight and counting. Now obviously this year's CMU team is different and Rod Carey knows that. It's going to be a physical game. Um, I think that coach has them uh, molded and put in the way he wants them now, and uh, you know, which is physical on both sides of the ball and real sound in the kicking game, and they're gonna challenge you. And if you're not fundamentally sound on both sides of the ball, and especially up front, um, you're gonna go ahead and uh, be in a real tussle with a real good football team. Yeah, they're one of the bigger MAC teams that we usually play in. Uh, I know our, uh, their offensive line is usually big, and uh, they usually run the ball downhill, so we gotta Prepare this week by uh, you know, doing our tackling drills and make sure our scheme is sound up front. Some exciting news for the Mid-American Conference last weekend. The conference announced they will add two more bowl games starting in 2014. One of them is very unique. It's in the Bahamas, held in Nassau. Now, can you imagine actually going as a student to a game like that? It'd be pretty cool. Now, obviously, this is something that Matt Commissioner Ron Steinbrecher is very proud of for the future. All of us are going to be, all these other folks are going to be just wonderful partners. There's a neat little stadium that they have that they built about a decade ago and was recently refurbished. It's going to be the perfect size for what we want to do, and it should make for a, a really unique and outstanding football event. Hawks trying to extend their two-game winning streak against Carolina. First period, Michael Hanzus flips the puck off the boards. Patrick Sharp breaks away and goes top shelf, one nothing Hawks. And then later in the third period, Hawks turn it over in their own zone. And Ron Hazy flips it to the net, somehow finds its way in. So at the end of regulation, we have 2-2, two to two, so that means it's a shootout. 0-2 for, for both teams to start the shootout. Sharpie is third. He's going to put a nice deke move on Cam Ward. 
making his second goal of the game. And all Corey Crawford has to do is make the stop on Jeff Skinner. And he does it. Game. Blouses. Hawks winner of winners of three straight go on to win this in a shootout. Three to two is the final. NLCS game four. Cardinals finally showing the wood. They've been struggling hitting in the first three games. They're still up two games to one. Third inning, two run homer from Matt Holiday. Three to one cards. And then in the seventh inning, it's three to two. And pinch hitter Shane Robinson adds insurance. Hits the solo bomb to left, putting the cards up four to two. That's all St. Louis would need. That puts LA on the brink. It's a 3 1 series lead for the cards. And also last night, the Red Sox ended up being Detroit one to nothing. And also back here at NIU, congratulations to Sarah Angelos winning Mac West Player of the Week for volleyball. Volleyball will hit the road coming up this weekend before they return to victory finally for a lot of home games in a row. So. Thanks, Eli. No problem. Well, if you've ever been in an airport, you know what to expect to see there. When we come back, did you hear the one about the kangaroo at the airport check-in line? You'll want to see this. Oh, hey, are you walking home right now? I'll be fine. In Melbourne, Australia, police had to lock down part of the airport after a kangaroo bounced in the terminal and surprised passengers shopping in a pharmacy. Take a look at this. Wildlife rescue volunteers were brought in to tranquilize the animal and take it away for treatment. The kangaroo had been hit by a car outside the terminal. They named it Cyrus after the mascot of Australia's national airline, Qantas. Kangaroos are being pushed out of their native environment because of continuing construction in the area. Now, if we were talking about Canada, I suppose we'd have to have a bear in the story. <laughs> yeah. It looks like the kangaroo did survive the ordeal, but we don't know if he got any frequent flyer miles. <laughs> <laughs> well, for 24-hour news, you can like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. We'll be back this same time Monday, so enjoy your weekend, and thanks for watching. Goodbye, everyone.